Hello, and thank you so much for joining me. My name is Samer, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can simultaneously download files from the web using R. So without further ado, let's get right into it. This is the website that we're going to be downloading the files from. This is the Stats New Zealand website. And these are the particular files that I want to download. We have a combination of files. We have comma separated value files. We have zip files. And I think we may have a few other formats in there. But these are the files that we essentially want to download. And this is a great way because these are a lot of files and we want to just download them all at once in a really quick and efficient manner. And we can do that using R. So let's just jump straight into the code. Okay, first we need to load in the appropriate libraries. So I'm just going to load in the tidyverse. Next, I'm going to load in our selenium. And this is actually interesting because I did try using Arvest for this and Arvest did not work. Arvest, Arvest has its limitations in terms of the types of websites it can, it can scrape. However, when you use our selenium, you have a lot more leverage when it comes to scraping your data. If you don't, or if you've never used our Selenium or you don't know how to use it, I did make a tutorial on it. You will need to install Java before you being able to use our Selenium. Uh, so you can check out the video that I made about it. I'll leave a link in the description below. And then last but not least, we will need the netstat package as well. And that is for us to find a free port uh, for, uh, for, um, for us to connect to our Selenium server. So I'm just gonna go ahead and run these. Okay, great. Now we can get started with connecting to our Selenium server. So first things first, I'm going to create an object called RS driver object. And I'm going to set it equals to the RS driver function. This is the function that starts our Selenium server for us. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to first of all, pass in the browser parameter and set it equals to Chrome because I want to use Google Chrome as the browser. Next, I need to set the Chrome version. And to get the Chrome version, all you need to go, all you need to do is go to um, a new URL and type in Chrome colon slash slash version. And the version should show at the top. Now you should only be concerned with the first two digits and you need to find a version that matches the first two digits. And to find the list of applicable versions you can use, you can simply type in binman and then type in list versions and then type in the Chrome driver. And these are the list of versions that you can use. Now, as long as the first two digits match, you should be fine. But in this instance, we actually have the same exact version listed here. So we're just going to go ahead and use it. And then I'm going to set the verbose equals to false. And that is to suppress any messages when connecting to the Selenium server. And then last but not least, setting the port equals to free port, which comes from the netstat package. So let's go ahead and run that. All right. And now it loaded up a web browser for us and you can see that it's being controlled by automated test software. So we have our Selenium connection. So let's close out of this and let's go ahead and access the client object. So access the client object. And the way to do that is we're going to create an object called remdr and set it equals to the RS driver object. And we're going to access the client by typing in the dollar sign and then client. And once we run it, now we have the client object. So to connect, we're just going to say remdr dollar sign open. And once we run that, it should load up a new browser for us. That's also automated. I'm going to load in the URL that we want to connect to. So I'm going to go ahead and navigate to it. So remdr navigate. I'm going to navigate to the URL. So I'm going to run. And as you can see, it's loading up in the automated browser and it loaded up. Okay, now we just need to inspect the HTML of the website. In order to do so, I am interested in downloading these files over here. So let's see if we can notice some patterns that we can follow to download all the files. So I'm going to right click and click on inspect. And then as I look at it, so that is the link that we want. So this right here, this URL, that's the URL that we want to pass into the download.file function. And that's the function we're going to be using to download the files. That's the URL we're going to need. Now this obviously does fall within an H3 class. So I think this is pretty specific for us to go off of. 
So I'm just going to use the X path to find the H3 element and then go within the H3 element to find the A tag. So I'm just going to copy the class name because I'm going to need that and let's get with finding the elements. So remdr dollar sign find element and I'm going to be using the X path method. So set the using parameter to X path and then we're going to pass in the X path and the way we do it is we're going to type in a double slash and that means search through all within all the document and look for the h3 tags in specific where the class attribute is equals to the value that we pasted because that's the class name that we're interested in and then after that we actually want to look for the a tag so we're going to type in a slash and type in the a tag and then what we're going to do is we're going to store this in an object and we're just going to call this data files and once we run that it looks like we are good to go. Okay, so now we have all of our data files. Now we want to do two things. We want to extract the title of each one because we want to use that for our naming convention when we're creating the when we're downloading the files. And then we also need the href attribute so that we can access the URLs. So let's go ahead and get the names. So we're just going to go ahead and um, use an l apply function in this case. So in the lapply function, it will take a list and it will take a function. So the list that we're passing in will be the data files list. And then what I'll be passing in as the function is a custom function that we'll make. And I'm just going to pass it in right here. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to say x dollar sign get element text. And this is a function within our selenium. And what it does is you can pass in an element and when you call the get element function, get element text function, it will return to you the text of that element. So get element text. And then I'm also going to pipe it in an unlist. And I am going to go ahead and run this. And there's an unexpected, oh, forgot to close it, of course. And there you go. So now we have a list of all the titles. Now the problem here is that it's a list within a list, so we need to unlist this. And it's funny because we already did an unlist, so it did one level of unlisting, but we need to do some further unlisting. And the way to do it is by using the flatten function in the per package, and the per package is part of the tidyverse package. So what I'm going to do is after this, I'm going to do a further pipe, and I'm going to call the function called flatten. And it's flatten character. So what flatten character means is it's going to flatten your list into a character list. So if I were to run this, we're going to notice that the list has been flattened, and that's how we want it. Now, since I want to use these, uh, use this list at, for my file names, we do need to remove characters that would not work. So in this case, we cannot use colons in our file name. So I do want to remove the colon. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to pipe it in and call it str remove all and I'm just going to simply pass in the colon. And let's store this in an object called data file names. So I'm going to go ahead and run that. Okay, perfect. We have that. Now next, let's go ahead and get those uh, URL links. And the way to do it is we're going to also use an l apply function. And I'm going to pass in the data files because that's the list of our elements. And then we're also going to create a custom function. And this time what we're going to do is we are going to say x dollar sign get element attribute. And since if we go back here to the website, we're going to see that this actually falls in an href attribute. So that's the attribute that we're interested in. So we're just going to say get element attribute and pass in the href attribute and then also pipe it into an unlist and then also pipe it into to uh, a flying character. Okay, and let's go ahead if we were to run that see what it gives us. Oh, again, I do need to close this, of course, forgot the parentheses again, and let's go ahead and run it. Okay, so it gives us a list of all the URLs. And these are all the URLs. And if you notice, if we look at one of them, for example, we're going to notice that it ends with the with the file format. So this means that this is a download link. So when we navigate to this URL, it's going to download the file. Okay. 
So let's go ahead and store that in an object as well while we're at it. Data, call it data file links. And let's just go ahead and run it. Okay, wonderful. Okay, so we've done a lot, uh, but there's just one more step, which is just to download all the files. And to do that, I'm just going to write a quick for loop. So I'm just going to type in for i in one length of data file names. It could be data file links or even the data files. It's just uh, I'm using this because um, for the length. Now, keep in mind that these two, well, all these three actually will have the same length. They should have the same length. Um, and we can do that just by checking it. So if we look at the length of data files, we can see that's 101, length, and then data file names, also 101, and then also for the links, it's also 101. So great, we're on the right page. So continuing with the loop, it only takes one function, which would be the download.file function. And the download file download.file function, we're only concerned with two parameters. We're concerned with the URL parameter, and that's where we're going to pass in our href links that we collected. So the URL would be equals to, oh, we have to actually uh, write the function. So download.file and then type in URL equals to data file links and refer to the first index of that iteration. And then we're also going to use the dest file. And this is what the naming convention that you will use for your file. Now, the tricky part here is that some of our files are CSVs, some of our files are zips. Some of them are some other type of format. So how do we go about capturing this? Uh, we can use a gsub function for this to where we can detect the last period and give us everything be uh, beyond the last period of the link. So in that case, it gives us the file extension that we can use. So the way we do that is I'm just going to set the desk file equals to paste zero. And keep in mind for this one, it's going to if you don't specify a path, it's just going to write these files to whatever your current working directory is. So in this case, I have the paste zero. So we want to say the data file names because that's what we want to use as the name of the file. And then what we want to attach to it is a gsub. And in the gsub, we are passing in the pattern. And the pattern here is the data file links. And it's the first iteration. Oop, and I do need to replace this with an I and not a one. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to we so we passed in the pattern. We want to look at the replacement. Or let me just look at this. So pattern. OK, so no, let's pass in the X. So the X would be our links. So data file links. And then the pattern is equals to and the pattern here will look a little weird syntax wise so I'm going to put in a period and a star so that means match any character and then what I'm going to do is I'm also going to pass in a, a period here and what this particularly means is match the period and since this is looking for any character what this is going to do is it's going to match everything up until the last period which is exactly what we want and then what we want to do is replace this with uh, a blank like that. So if we were to run this, and let me just close this out. If we were to run this, I think we have an extra one over here. Let me just remove this parentheses right here. OK. So if we were to run just the paste function right here, and let me set the i equals to 1, for example, and then just run this. Um, yeah, we oh, actually for the replacement, we have to replace it with a dot just so that we can actually include it. So in this case, if we were to run the paste function, we're going to notice that it actually gives us the file name that we picked from the fi uh, data file names list and then followed by the format that's in the link. So in this case, it will make sure that it downloads the file properly. So that's all you would need, and now we can go ahead and run the loop.
All right, so it looks like the downloads have been completed. Let's go ahead and check on our current working directory. And we can see that all the files have been loaded in and it seems that all of them have been loaded in properly. So we have a variation. We have CSV files and we have zip files and we have even XLSX files. Uh, so this captured it very well and we can even open one of these files, for example, just to look at it. Now, of course, you know, we're not really concerned too much with the format of the data sets. I just wanted to use this as an example to show you that you can download files, a lot of files at once. So it only took us a few minutes and it downloaded 101 files for us with CSVs and zips and XLSX files. So it's pretty effective and I hope you learned something new from this. So thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for some more videos and if you have any questions or concerns, let me know in the comments below and I'll be happy to get to you. Thank you so much and have a great day.